If I were them, I'd just hit pause right now. Mm -hmm. I'd just hit pause. You don't want to mess up. I'd take a breath. Yep. And I would, I would say we're waiting on Billy Donovan. And he's going to have to tell us no. Or I would already be working behind the scenes and making sure before we move on that Billy Donovan 100% will not be the next head coach at the University of Kentucky. Um, Billy is still in the middle of an NBA season. He's going to be in the postseason with the Chicago Bulls. Mm -hmm. But they are probably going to be in the first play-in game in the Eastern Conference, meaning their season could be over this weekend. Yeah. Like it, it's 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 or you know not this weekend but but soon. Yeah, in two weeks. Yep. Well, it's not even two weeks. No, it's not even two weeks. I mean, the playing game's April sixteenth. The first playing game. So. And they are not getting in the playoffs. No, there's no way. So, I mean, their season could reasonably be over in less than a week. Don't you just wait it out at this point? Mm-hmm. Or at least before you move on, you just have to know. Like if I'm Mitch Barnhart and if somebody asks me privately I, and we go and hire somebody besides Billy Donovan and somebody asks me privately, Mitch, was Billy Donovan an option? I want to be able to say, oh, we, we pursued that. And mm -hmm. we were willing to wait on him and he knew that. We told him that we don't need anything from him until he's done with the Chicago Bulls season. But – when the Chicago Bulls season is over, will you accept this offer to come be the next head coach of the University of Kentucky? And he told us he was not interested in doing that. So we moved on. But unless I hear that from Billy Donovan, I'm not moving on at this point. If you could get Dan Hurley instead of Billy Donovan, fine. And if you could get Nate Oates instead of Billy Donovan, I would have done that. Jay Wright instead of Billy Donovan, sure. Scott Drew in front of Billy Donovan, I would have done that. But I think we've reached the point now where Whatever you do next is going to be a little bit of a reach. It's not going to be obvious to anybody whatever you do next is, other than if it's Billy Donovan. And that's why I would make him tell me no. And I, you know, ready for this? I'm not sure that he was going to tell you no. I already see some people moving off of it. Some of the same college basketball reporters who a week ago were saying, oh, if the Kentucky job opened, or even two days ago, if the Kentucky job opens, Billy's not going to do it. Don't even bother asking Billy. Some of them are now even going, well, you know, maybe. Because just common sense, if you're Billy Donovan. How much longer has he got in Chicago? It can't be. there. I mean, you would think they're close to hitting a reset, right? It's going nowhere. It's going absolutely nowhere, yeah. It's going nowhere this year. Like, they're good. he's good enough to not get fired, but not good enough to go anywhere. Right. Well, eventually, those guys get fired. Yes. So how much longer do you have in Chicago? Do you me tell you the same reason Billy Donovan might take the Kentucky job if you offer it to him? It's the exact same reason John Calipari just took the Arkansas job. Because how much longer do you have at Kentucky? Mm -hmm. John Calipari didn't take the Arkansas job because he loves Northwest Arkansas or because he loves Tyson Foods or because they have more money than our Kentucky or because it's a better situation than Kentucky. The only reason he took the Arkansas job is because how much longer do you have at Kentucky? Right. You can keep this job. We're not going to fire you. Now, but do this again, and we will. So then where are you at? John's options were stay on the hot seat at Kentucky, maybe get fired after next year, or take a brand new challenge at Arkansas with fresh expectations, fresh fan base, all of that stuff. End of the day, pretty easy decision. Why is Billy Donovan's decision much different than that? Yeah, if it was picking between being the next head coach year one of the Chicago Bulls, like it's just two jobs are on the table, you're unemployed. You want to coach the Chicago Bulls or the Kentucky Wildcats? Maybe then you go Chicago Bulls. Mm -hmm. But what if you're not in year one anymore? You're just coming off of another whatever year, and if you have another whatever year, it might be the end of you. Or you could go be the coach of what most people will tell you is the best job in college basketball. Yeah. And among the reasons Billy got out of college basketball to begin with, there was a lot, but I'm on the list somewhere is because he got fed up with the way recruiting worked. He got tired of being a slave to recruiting. The idea that he has to show up at 
grassroots games at all hours of the day, all throughout the summer, take phone calls nonstop, be on Zooms nonstop, or whatever the equivalent of Zooms were when Billy was a coach. Like the idea that he had to continue to do that, to work in that way, to be a successful high major coach, just sort of like it wasn't fun for him anymore. Um, without exception, when you talk to a NBA coach who used to work in college, the one thing they will always tell you is that they prefer the NBA because it's just basketball. They just coach their teams. That's all they have to do. They don't have to recruit, deal with boosters, deal with academic people. When I, I remember the first time Brad Stevens came through here as head coach of the Celtics. I went to the game. I met with him after the game. We talked for a few minutes. He was getting his brains beat in in that first year in Boston. They were losing a lot. And I remember him saying something like, I've already lost more games this season than I lost my entire time at Butler. Like the losing is getting to me. This is not fun. But I, I, I remember him also saying, All I do is watch film, coach my team. That's it. Like at Butler or at any other college job, you watch your, you 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 coach your team. You watch film. You have a game. Then after the game, you got to host recruits in your office, talk to some parents, make some phone calls on your way home. It never stops. He didn't like that anymore. Mm -hmm. The NBA is a preferable lifestyle. But now, because of name, image, and likeness, and we talked about this before, and transfer waivers, recruiting is much more transactional. It's much more like NBA free agency. You don't have to be the first one to offer anymore. Like, that used to be a thing. You know, oh, I've been recruiting him since he was in eighth grade. You don't have to do that anymore. You, you know, when NBA free agency starts, you know what teams do? They don't rely on three years of recruiting. You know what they say? Here's what we can offer. Do you want that? Can anybody else offer that? If not, you're probably coming with us. Sometimes people take less money to be in a specific situation, but for the most part, NBA free agency, people take the best contracts they can get. Mm -hmm. Why do you think Chandler Parsons played in Memphis, Tennessee? It ain't because he dreamed of living on the Mississippi River. It's because the Grizzlies offered him a contract that nobody else would offer him. So he said, grit and grind, let's go. Simple as that. That's the way college basketball recruiting is going to start working. It's already working that way to some degree. My point being, at a place like Kentucky, it's no longer important to be at all these grassroots games and talk to all these AAU coaches and consume yourself with stuff that you'd rather not be consumed with. You know what you have to do at the University of Kentucky? If you're Billy Donovan, probably fly into the hometown of whoever the number one transfer portal prospect is. Introduce yourself as Billy Donovan, two-time national champion, new head coach of the Kentucky Wildcats, used to work in the NBA. Young man at Kentucky, we'd really like to have you. I know I just met you. What's your mom's name again? Here's a million dollars I can guarantee you to come play at Kentucky for me. You interested? Okay, we're done then. Recruiting success accomplished. That's it. That's all it takes. You don't have to put in all the legwork anymore. Right. So if you got out of college basketball because you got tired of all the work that it took to recruit, isn't this the time to get back in? I think so. You don't have to do that anymore. Mm. You just have to show up with the money. So I understood when Billy left Florida why he did it. His options were to continue to coach in a sport that he no longer enjoyed everything that went hand in hand with it or go be the head coach in Oklahoma City of a young, amazing core. That makes perfect sense. Yep. But now what are his options? What will his options be in a week if Kentucky will just wait on him? What will be his options? To continue to coach an Eastern Conference franchise that is going nowhere. Right. Just sort of stuck in the middle. And probably you don't even get to do that much longer. Right. Because once you stay stuck in the middle too long, somebody says, well, it's time to just blow the whole thing up and boom, they start with you. All right? So that's option one. Or... In the era of name, image, and likeness, go coach the biggest and best basketball program in America. The Gary Parish Show, live weekdays at 10 a.m.